Coming up, making the grade. Some kids are finally heading back to class, but others are still learning virtually. It's a jet. I like that jet. We'll tell you about one group that is providing free online learning options for families who might be struggling. Also, good for your mind. We'll get some expert advice and ways to improve your mental health as you head back to school. Then, a kid's guide to air travel. We've got the inside scoop from the Transportation Security Administration. Plus, with summer coming to an end soon, what do the change in seasons mean for our pets? We've got the answers and some great advice. And crayon activists will update you on a story we brought you last year about a girl who was on a mission to make coloring look more like the people around us. I wanted to make an art supplies brand that let kids know that not only the peach or the brown, it's always skin color. Her inspiring story just ahead. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It is great to be with you as usual. We have a lot to tell you about, including these new images of the planet Jupiter that NASA just released. But let's begin with something I know a lot of you guys are focused on right now. That, of course, is school. As you guys probably know, students in some states have already started the new school year, while others are heading back in the coming weeks. And maybe the thought of going back to class stresses you out. It makes you feel a bit anxious. But experts say there are some simple things you guys can do to help improve your mental health and focus. Here with a few tips is our friend Tom Kirsting, a family therapist who wrote a book called Disconnected, How to Reconnect Our Digitally Distracted Kids. I want to provide you with some good strategies as you go back to school, as you start your school year. So just a quick few tips that will really help strengthen your mind and your mental health. Number one is you need to get good sleep. And the only way to do that, the best way to do that, you might not want to hear this, is to turn your phone into your parents at night at a certain time. And I promise you, you'll get a better night's sleep, and that's going to offset anxiety, possibility of depression, and so forth. Number two, I want you to replace some of your screen time with green time. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is get outside. Go outside with your friends after school. If you're in a cafeteria and you can go outside, get outside. All the research shows that the more time we spend outside, the less likely we are to develop a mental health condition. Uh, number three is get on a good homework schedule. Those kids that come home from school and the first thing they do is their homework always do better mentally in life because they're not, they don't have things weighing on their mind. They're not doing the things that please them first. They get the school work out of the way and they're always going to do better in school, which is going to uh, elevate your confidence. And last but not least, embrace boredom. And what I mean by boredom is the silence. We never take time to decompress. We're always distracted. Take 10 or 15 minutes each and every day, sit with yourself, and that's how you'll get to know yourself. That's how you'll develop a strong sense of self, a strong self-esteem. Trust me on this, and you will have a great, phenomenal start to the school year. Tom, thanks so much. Really great advice. Well, as we mentioned, some kids across the country are already back in the classroom, while others are technically back, but still at home learning virtually. Well, with the help of our sponsor, the Walton Family Foundation, we learned about one group that has partnered with an educational platform and is providing free online learning options for families who could use some help. Our good friend Kristen Dahlgren tells us what it's all about. It's a jet. I like that jet. Six-year-old Landon spends every Friday morning building. We made a list of some ideas and things we might find at our house. From the comforts of his home, Landon learns virtually through an online educational platform called OutSchool. Do you have one of these pieces? OutSchool.com offers thousands of live online classes for kids ages 3 to 18. The classes are small in size and there's a wide variety of subjects, something Landon's mom, Tika, who homeschools her children, appreciates. What was the theme today in your class with Ms. Rachel? Whether it's a foreign language, instrument, music lessons. He takes several different classes, but his favorite is his Lego club. You can take classes on anything from the science of frogs to the science of farts even. 
um, on various classes on on black history, on science, math, really you name it. If you're passionate about it, you can take classes on OutSchool. And at OutSchool.org, we work to make sure that any kid can take those classes, even if their family or they don't have the ability to pay. For those who can't afford to pay for the classes, the nonprofit OutSchool.org provides free online learning options for families in need. Price isn't a barrier to take classes on OutSchool, and we also work to make sure that any online virtual learning that takes place um, is also more affordable to, to parents and families. It definitely has helped, especially during COVID, when they were not able to meet with peers. It kept them engaged. Outschool.org launched in March 2020, right at the start of the pandemic. Since then, more than $5 million worth of free online classes have been given to over 30,000 low-income American families or those needing additional access to financial resources. We've done our best to, to serve um, any family in the United States that we, we can who has this need and knows of, of our service. In addition to affordability, parents also credit OutSchool for offering classes that much more closely match their child's learning style and passions. I was drawn to it because they still taught what, you know, um, public school usually teaches, but kind of in a more exciting way. And that's the way that Liam learns. He needs to be able to apply it to his own reality. Susie's nine-year-old son, Liam, is homeschooled and is passionate about the science class he takes. It's called Tiny Science. I really like it. There's a ton of fact in it. And Liam loves learning about bugs. An entomologist is a person that studies insects. Entomology is the study of insects. And so since he is so interested in entomology and uh, nature science, we were able to find that for him. And so we bypassed the regular, you know, science classes that might have bored him in a way and might actually have pushed him away from science. But now he is a true scientist because he was so fascinated by insects and he can identify any insect. Um, Most insects. Yeah, a very wide variety of insects. And that's just because his passion was encouraged and ignited by this teacher. Parents say OutSchool offers flexibility and allows kids to learn at their own pace. There's no rush to force this learning on you. It'll, it'll happen when, when it happens for you. Landon is also learning to engage with different ethnicities, different age. So I believe that OutSchool provides him with the structure and the socialization that he'll actually need as he gets older and he goes out. And it's that sense of engagement that remains at the head of the class for some families. Not surprisingly, a lot of families had really difficult times navigating uh, COVID and the learning environment post-COVID. And a lot of families didn't have the resources to really make their children feel engaged and connected. And the joy, not only are we connecting kids to live instructors, but we also connect them to other kids and to other learners. Uh, around the world who are interested in, in the same thing. All right, Kristen, thanks so much. Let's head now to outer space. Check out these incredible new images of Jupiter. NASA released these pictures taken by that brand new James Webb Space Telescope showing a stunning Jupiter that will give scientists more clues to the planet's inner life. Did you know that Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system? And here's a fun fact. NASA says if Earth was the size of a grape, Jupiter would be the size of a basketball. Wow, those are amazing pictures. Well, if you and your family travel this summer on an airplane, you might have experienced some turbulence in the form of airport delays or maybe your flight was canceled. And kids, you may also recall the folks in the blue shirts who helped guide you through security, sending your stuff through x-ray machines, making sure there was nothing that could cause problems on board the plane. Those folks are with the Transportation Security Administration. They're called TSA agents. Well. TSA is doing its part to cut down airport delays by helping both kids and grown-ups be ready when they get to the airport. 
and also have a little fun along the way. Joining us now is Janice Burrell, the social media branch manager for the TSA. She's also known as the princess of puns and teller of travel tips. I don't know how you get that on a business card. Janice, so great to have you on today. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Lester. It's nice to be here. Well, first off, you run the TSA's social media accounts. Now, airport security is no laughing matter, as you know, but you and your team post a lot of funny content, like this video showing how bunnies fly by airplane. How does humor help you send your very serious message? Lester, I've always thought that people won't remember what they read or what they saw, but they will remember the joke that you told them. So my goal is to make sure that people remember the travel tips. So when they get to the airport, they can get through security quickly and smoothly. And I know people are actually sharing this online. What has the feedback been uh, from the public to your approach? Well, uh, we get a lot of positive feedback. We've increased our followers. We've increased engagement over the last year by using this approach. And most importantly, we get people to listen and to chat with us so that when there is something really important that needs to get out other than the travel tips, we can get that message to a mass amount of a, a vast amount of people. And I know that's so important. It's been a pretty challenging summer, as I mentioned, for travelers, the, the delays, the flight cancellations. Traveling can be stressful. So you guys at the TSA produce some new videos designed just for kids to try to make the travel process a little bit easier. Let's watch one. That video was great and embedded in there, as we mentioned, with some really important advice about what you can bring on and can't bring on. How did you guys come up with this creative idea? Well, actually, Lester, it was from watching you doing uh, COVID when you started talking about creating a news program for kids. My thought was, is what a brilliant idea, and I should be able to do that for TSA as well. Uh, so thanks to you, we now have created this program where we can create these travel tips for kids. Well, that's terrific. I'll take that as a compliment. Thanks so much for that. A lot of kids and grown-ups are bound to get hungry when you're flying. And you have a video explaining what kids should know about packing snacks. Let's watch this one. Well, I know that was produced for kids, but there was some really important information. Sometimes I'm not sure what kind of foods I can bring on through security. Now, we know some of the snacks you can carry on in, in your bag, but are there any snacks you can't bring through TSA? Well, we don't want you to bring any snacks that are, uh, for example, pudding or jello that are more than 3.4 ounces. So any liquid or anything that's jelly-like that is more than 3.4 ounces, uh, cannot go because it needs to follow the liquids rule. But other than that, with solid foods, you're good to go. Sandwiches, pizza, it's all good. Awesome. And another popular item we all like to travel with, of course, are laptops or iPads, you know, the, the whole gamut of electronics. And you've also created a video just for kids about traveling with those items. What's the rule kids should follow? Well, easily, always follow the rules that the officers tell you to do. Uh, you can take, please take your electronics out of your bag, place them in the bin, but we will not mess up or erase any of those great scores that you have already in your games, and we won't hurt the games in any way. All right. What do you think is the most important thing for families to know about traveling, especially if they plan to go away for Labor Day weekend when presumably there are going to be a lot of folks traveling with them? I would advise everybody to get to the airport early because everybody will be traveling. Read the uh, instructions that you'll see written around the checkpoint. Please listen to the officers. They are there to help you, to get you through security quickly, and just be patient as usual. All right, and before you go, I mentioned earlier, you call yourself the princess of puns. Do you have a favorite post? 
I like all the posts, Lester. I have the privilege of approving all the posts that go out every day. So I really don't have a favorite. If I can get the message out, then I'm happy. And the, the, you've got some characters behind you there. Are those people that are part of your team? Yes, sir. This is my team. Um, and I just want to point out that the curly haired young lady with the glasses on to the right is the person who has created these videos and has done a really marvelous job. But my team as a whole, they're fantastic. They work hard. Um, and we just we just enjoy what we do every well, day. Br bravo to the whole bunch. And we really do appreciate what you do. And that, of course, is making sure that we're safe on board airplanes. We appreciate it. Janet Spurl, thank you. Thank you, Lester. It's been a pleasure. All right. Well, did you know August is National Dog Month? It reminded us that fall will be here before long, and that affects our pets' routines as well as ours. So how can our four-legged friends stay active, rain or shine? Our friend Jenny Huh has details. Hi, Lester. Summer is wrapping up and it's back to school, but what do changing seasons mean for your pets? Experts say that animals are a lot like humans. They can get hot and cold easily. So here are some safety tips. Summer, sunshine, swimming, and no homework. It's easy for you to keep cool with popsicles and lemonades by the pool, but what about your furry companion? You know, if it's really hot, especially if temperatures get above 100 degrees, that's when dogs really struggle because they don't sweat the same way humans do. They pant. With some preparation, summer can also be a perfect time. <laughs> First, your pets should always have water and shade. Try to limit your pet's exposure to the outdoors to early in the morning or late in the evening when the temperature is relatively cooler. And when it's hot, you never want to leave them outside for too long, especially in the car. Never leave a pet in the car. Even in just a few moments, the temperatures can become deadly. Even if the windows are open and air conditioning is on, experts say temperatures in a car can rise 20 degrees in 10 minutes and 40 degrees in one hour. So 70 degrees outside can be 110 degrees in your car. Keep in mind that the pavement can be very hot. If you put your hand down and touch it, that kind of heat can also burn your dog's paws. And watch out for heat-related injuries. So if you notice that your pet's paw appears to have a, a burn or a lesion, things like that, definitely clean it. If you think your pet is overheated, get some towels, run them under cool water, wrap your pet up in those, and then you really do need to seek urgent veterinary care. Pets can also suffer from mental distress. With fall coming up, the new school year for you means more alone time for your pets. There's potential for a little bit of separation anxiety. So just like you go back to school shopping for pencils and folders, help your pets prepare for school days without you. The best way to reduce separation anxiety is to really practice with them. And so you leave the house for five minutes and then you come back. And so they know that you're going to come back and that you're not gone forever. And like us, pets have seasonal allergies too, especially during the fall and spring. So if you notice your pet becomes itchier during those times, develops watery eyes, sneezing, coughing, those kinds of things, have them check for allergies by your veterinarian. And if the weather is crummy outside, not to worry. <sighs> you can still have fun with your pets indoors as well. I think of the three T's to start, treats, toys, and training. Teach your pet a new trick. Uh, a lot of pets already know sit and down, uh, but work on shake or speak or jumping up and down or, or doggy dance, things like that. A lot of cats like feather toys and laser pointers. And if you don't have a pet, you can still help our furry friends at your local animal shelter. <laughs> Fostering is a great way to teach kids responsibility and compassion for the animals and let them have a hands-on animal handling experience. But don't forget that no matter when and where, your pets are a lot like you. If I'm uncomfortable with the heat or cold, my pet is probably going to be uncomfortable too. So again, it's just that common sense. Happy National Dog Month to all you pet owners and your fluffy friends. 
Okay, Jenny, thanks so much. Great information. Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, an update on a story we brought you last year about a girl who was on a mission to make coloring look more like real life. Bellin Woodard was coloring in her Loudoun County classroom a few years ago when she realized something was missing from the crayon box. Her third grade classmate asked for the skin color crayon, but there wasn't a color that matched her own. I heard my classmates call the peach crayon the skin color crayon, and yeah, I know that it is a skin color, but it's not the only one. And so I kind of felt confused. So she decided to do something. I'm the world's first crayon activist, and what an activist is to me is like someone who's active in making a change, and I call myself a crayon activist because I like to say I'm changing the world one crayon at a, at a time. Thanks to Bellin's creativity and drive, she and other kids now have more options. If I were to color myself right now, I would use skin color Sahara. Bellin created the More Than Peach Project, her own line of crayons that reflect the different shades we all come in. So in this pack, I have skin color Denali, and then skin color Serengeti, skin color Andes, and skin color reef. She came up with 12 colors. Each have different names with skin color in the title, so kids know that each one is the skin color crayon. The middle schoolers more than peach line also includes other art supplies. I wanted to make an art supplies brand that let kids know that not only the peach or the brown, it's always skin color. There's all these different shades and and you just want to make sure that when you're coloring, you can see you and not someone else. And now she's published a book about her experience. Does anyone have the skin color crayon? My friend asks. Some call it the skin color crayon. I've heard it many times before, but this time when I pass the peach color crayon to him, something in me feels different. She hopes the picture book can teach young kids the importance of inclusion. It was important for me to write this as a book because if kids learn when they're younger, then when they're older, they'll be able to teach other kids and to really just make the spaces better because there's always room for improvement. And she also hopes to inspire other kids to do something. You can do anything you set your mind to and to do it your way and not anyone else's way because there's really, there's not a right, there's not a right way to do something. And just to keep on inspiring people. And if you have a problem, it's not just gonna go away. You actually have to do something about it. And who knows, there could be more people who has that problem and you're helping not only yourself, but helping others. Well, that's gonna do it for us. We hope you learned a few things. Also had some fun along the way. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. We'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. And you can also follow us on Instagram at Nightly Kids. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.